Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to go over chapter 14. In this chapter you're going to get familiar with some other commands. So the first command that I'm going to start with is arc. We have multiple ways of creating an arc in AutoCAD like 11 different methods but uh, I'm going to talk about one of them today. Okay so if you come here in the draw panel of the home tab you can find arc um, button and if you open this menu you can pick the first one. Okay so this one is three points that I'm going to start with. Okay so as you can see, it is saying a specify a start, uh, start point of arc. So I'm going to click and then a specify second point of arc. <clears throat> the second point actually will be the distance uh, from the uh, line for your arc. Okay, so pick another point and then it is looking for the end point of arc. Okay, so you are kind of picking the first point, then the midpoint, and then the last point or the end point. Uh, I'm going to pick here. So if you want them to be on one line, you can draw a line, the starting point and the end point. So, and then create the arc. So I'm going to start with here and make sure your OS snap is on. Then you can pick somewhere uh, around here and this one. Or it doesn't matter where, where you click, whether here or here or here, it is going to create the same arc for you. But your second click is the one that specifies this distance. Okay. So if you want it to be, uh, to have an, a specific distance, you can just click and then <coughs> now I'm sorry, you can specify this, uh, this distance, right? So I can type in, for example, 10 inch. and then click the second point. Now let's play with uh, one of the other methods. Uh, let me delete these. Okay. Um, I'm going to try this one, start and and direction. Okay. So pick this one. And I need to specify the start point, then end point. And then I need to specify the tangent direction, right? So do you want it to be in this direction and uh, with which degree you want it? Okay. Or do you want it to be in this other direction? So you just need to click somewhere. That's it. And the shortcut to this default arc uh, command, which is three point, the shortcut to three point arc is a enter. Okay. So type in a and then hit enter and that's it. You can create an arc. The next command that I'm going to talk about is ellipse. The shortcut to this command is EL. Okay. So, and the shape is going to be like an oval. So let's, uh, and the icon actually is located over here. And as you can and see, it's a fly out button again. So I'm going to pick this one axis end. Okay. So it is saying a specify axis end point of ellipse. So uh, I'm going to pick the first point and then it is saying a specify other end point. I'm going to, so this is the longer axis that I'm drawing first, right? So I'm going to pick the end point and then I need to specify distance to other axis. Okay. And you see this kind of point line over here. 
that specifies the distance. If you want to go ahead and pick just somewhere random, you can just click or let's start it again. Or you can enter a specific value for the uh, distance from the first axis. Okay, so I'm going to hit five inches and that's it. So this one was axis and um, option. Okay, you have the other option, which is centered. It is saying a specify center of ellipse. So I'm going to pick and specify the center, a specify end point of axis. So it, this time it starts from the center and comes over here. Okay. And then you just need to specify the distance. That's it. So as you see, we have two axes over here. And this one is longer and this one is shorter. Okay, the next command that I'm going to talk about is polyline. Okay, and the shortcut to this command is PL. So polyline again allows us to create lines, right? But it has some differences with a regular line command. So let me show you. I'm going to hit L enter just a regular line. Okay. And then, as you see, I can draw the first line and then right after that, I can create the second one and just continue drawing, right? But when I click, these lines are separate, right? They are not connected. But po polyline, when you use polyline, these lines will be kind of attached and connected. So PL enter. And I'm going to draw the lines and to um, just get out of the command, you just need to hit enter again. And when I click, this is one object. You see the lines are attached and if you want them to be separate, you can hit, you can explode it actually. But when you use polyline, these lines are going to be attached. The other difference that polyline has with just regular line is that while you are drawing the lines, you can create arcs at the same time. Okay. So I'm going to show you how that works. So PL enter. I'm going to start um, with this point, for example, and then a specify next point. So I'm going to pick some, I'm going to start with a straight line first. Okay. And then I want to draw an arc over here. You see, so I don't need to get out of the command and use arc command this time using polyline. You can create arc while you are uh, in this command. So you see, we have other options over here, arc close in some other options. Okay. So you just need to hit arc, uh, hit a or type in a or just click on this button. So I'm going to type in a and you just need to create the arc in any method that you want. I mean, in any way that you want. So I'm going to, for example, randomly click here, or you can specify, um, a dimension for it, as you can see. So I'm going to click here and then if I continue drawing, you see, it's a still arc. And if you want to change it, you can, you need to go back to line again. Okay. If you want to have a straight line. So again, I'm going to type in L enter and it's a straight line, right? So you can continue drawing. If you want it to be arc again, a enter and then L enter and you can play with that, right? At the end, uh, for example, you see this option, you don't have to actually, you can just hit enter and get out and get out of the command. That's it. Right. But you have the option to close the boundary of, um, for example, this shape, if I want it to be a closed boundary, you see the option we have over here close. So if I hit 
see enter the shape is closed is a closed boundary and you don't need to just kind of click at the start point to close it yourself you just need to hit C enter and that's it so uh, this is how you can use polyline in AutoCAD the next command that I'm going to talk about is spline okay so spline we use spline command to create free forms in AutoCAD and it's quite cool so if and the actually and the shortcut to this command is SPL okay so for SPLine the shortcut is SPL and so if you expand the draw panel you can find the icons over here and we have two options for creating uh, the SPLine one is fit and the other is CV but uh, the one that we are going to cover in this chapter is this one okay spline fit not spline CV so let's hit and click on the icon and I, as I told you the shortcut is SPL and then it is saying specify first point then specify next point and then you can continue drawing like this okay so you just need to pick some points um, based on what you want and then when you want to kind of uh, finish the command you just need to hit enter and you see I'm able to kind of play with this line over here with the direction of the line so I'm gonna pick somewhere I'm gonna hit enter Oh, sorry I'm gonna start over so SPL enter I'm gonna pick some points and then at the end you just need to hit enter okay and if you wanted to edit this line you just need to select it and you can see um, these grips right so you can pick them and just change uh, it in any way that you want okay now the next thing that I'm going to talk about is the endpoints of this SP line okay so um, let's see so imagine that I have a line over here let's say for example like this And I want the end point of this SP line to be tangent to this line. So we have this direction. Let's change it a little bit. Okay. Okay. So I want this to come straight and join this line. Okay. So let's say how, let's see how we can do that. So if you click and select the line and pick the end point, I mean, you don't need to select the end point. Okay. Do not click just move your cursor over mm, this one the last grip and then you see this option that we have over here tangent direction okay so just move your cursor over it and hit tangent direction okay and then you can specify a direction so your lines can be tangent to that okay so i'm going to pick uh, specify this direction over the line okay move your cursor over the line and click somewhere make sure the OS snap is on and pick somewhere on the line and that's it so this line at this point is tangent to this straight line okay so let's see for example if it's like this and I want it to be tangent pick this one tangent direction to this line and you see it's the smooth and it's like the line is part of this SP line it looks like this right and if I want them to be kind of joined there is another command that actually book doesn't cover cover that but I'm going to talk about that uh, you can use join command to kind of join these two lines so select them and hit 
J inter. So these two lines are kind of one single line right now. Okay. Yep. So if you use join, it is not going to be SP line anymore. Okay. It's uh, a different object. So let's hit control Z or U enter. Okay, so I have this SP line and the same applies to this endpoint, right? You see we have tangent direction. If you want it to be tangent in any other direction, you can pick that direction. Okay, so for example, I'm going to hit this and I'm going to change the direction like this. The next command that I'm going to talk about is hatch and it is a very important command. You're going to probably use it anytime that you are drawing a floor plan or a section in AutoCAD. Okay. So what is hatch? Let me go to this floor plan. So this is the hotel suite drawing, right? And I'm seeing a line is missing over here. Okay. So when we draw a floor plan, we are actually cutting through the walls, right? So these walls um, needs to be filled in kind of. So wherever um, on the project or on the floor plan that we are cutting through, uh, wherever in the building that we are cutting through, we need to fill in those parts like the walls, right? So for filling them, we use hatch command. So the same is for sections, right? So where, when we have a section, that means we have kind of sliced a building and we are cutting through the walls, right? So where, wherever that we are cutting the walls, we need to fill in those um, portions of the drawing. Okay, so we can use a solid co color or kind of uh, a pattern to fill in these walls. And the shortcut to hatch command is H. Okay, so I'm going to hit H enter. Okay, let's hit escape. I'm going to show you first the icon. Okay, so uh, the icon for this for hatch command is located over here. Okay, and you see we have gradient and boundary um, as well, but you need to pick this one. Okay, so either H enter or um, use the icon. I'm going to draw a rectangle over here and I'm going to start with this one first. And just with a regular line. Okay, let's hit H enter and see what we have. Okay, as uh, as soon as you hit H enter and get into the hatch command, you can see this hatch creation tab, right? So, and we have multiple options over here that I'm going to talk about. So if I move my cursor over this rectangle you see it kind of fills and the fills in this shape right but if you uh, uh, if you don't click it doesn't work for it to work you need to click inside this boundary okay so let's first see how we can define a boundary and then fill it Right? So we have two options over here. The first one is pick points. So for pick points, you just need to, <coughs> you just need to pick a point inside this boundary and click. So move your cursor inside the rectangle and just click and that's it. You, yeah, you have filled, uh, kind of filled this portion of the drawing. Okay, and if you want to get out of the command, you can either hit enter or escape. And that's it. Let's hit control Z. This time I'm going to fill in both of these um, shapes. 
So edge inter. And I'm going to pick point. By default, it is set to pick points. So I'm going to pick here. And then I can go ahead and pick the other boundary. Um, and then hit enter. Okay. So you see, if I click, all of them are selected, both, right? And if I hit delete, they will both be deleted. Okay. So if you continue when you click hatch, when you select hatch, if you continue picking objects or boundaries, you are using the same hatch for them, right? And later on, if you want to edit that, you can just pick one and then start editing, editing that. Okay. For example, changing the type of it or something. Or you can pick one by one and then get out of the command and pick the other boundary and then do it over and over again for each part. Let's hit H enter again. And the other options that we have, you see this pattern panel, uh, we can choose the pattern um, of the hatch from here. So if you want it to be solid, you can pick this one. So it's going to be a solid color, or you can pick some of these um, patterns. If you want to expand this and see the other options that you have here, you can use this pull down arrow and you can see the other patterns that we have. And you can, you can pick any of those to use. Okay. I'm going to use this one, for example, and you see, we have a pattern over here when I zoom in and you see the lines are so close to each other. I'm going to talk about that. Okay. So, hit enter and that's it. So if you want this pattern to look kind of uh, larger, you can kind of change the style of it. And to edit a, pa a hatch, you just need to click and select it and this tab will open up. Okay. Now I'm going to uh, change the scale factor of the hatch so we can see it in a larger pattern. We can see the pattern kind of larger. So by default, it is set to one. I'm going to change it to five. And as soon as I click somewhere, you see it has changed and the pattern is bigger. Okay. Let's go and edit it again. So the other options that we have over here, you see it is, I can pick solid from here or pattern or a gradient, you see? So I'm going to go with pattern. And then from here, you can specify the color of the pattern. So do you want it to be black and white or you can change it to any other color? And this is the color of the lines for pattern. If you want the background to have a color, I mean the fill portion, you can pick a color from here. So for example, like this. Okay. So I'm going to go with none. We don't want a color for background. And if you want to make it annotative, like what we had for dimensions and for text, you can pick this one. So it, the scale kind of coordinates with the scale of paper that way. Okay. So I'm going to go with this one, not annotated right now. And yeah, that's it. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about the boundaries, selecting the boundaries. Okay. So I'm going to hit delete each enter again. Now this time, instead of picking points, I'm going to use select. Okay. For select, you need to select the lines that kind of shape the boundary and the boundary. Okay. So for this rectangle, you just need to pick one of the lines and that's it. But if you want to, you have kind of separated uh, separate lines and you want to pick those, you need to pick all of them. Okay. So H enter 
and I'm going to use select and you can either go ahead and select them one by one or let's hit control Z or you can just select them all at the same time and hit enter. That's it. Okay, let's delete these again. Um, okay, so there are some important points about hash that I'm going to talk about. Let me draw a rectangle, kind of long rectangle over here. You may have a wall like this in your floor plan, right? And you are, when you are working, you are probably zoomed in on a portion of it. I'm going to explode the shape. So, okay. So you are probably zoomed in on a portion, right? And then you are going to use hatch, for example. I'm going to use pick points. So I need to pick a point within the boundary, right? So I'm going to pick this point. And you see it shows an error. My boundary is closed, right? So what's the issue over here? Let's see what is that? Why is that? So when you read through this text, so a closed boundary could not be determined, it is saying, and there might be gaps between the boundary objects, which is not the case over here because we have used the rectangle tool and we have closed boundaries. We are sure about that, right? The other uh, issue could be the boundary objects might be outside of the display area. Okay. Yeah. This is the case for us. So we have zoomed in on a portion of the drawing in a way that we are not able to see the whole wall uh, inside the display area. Right. So if I zoom out, I need to zoom out so I can see a kind of bigger portion of the wall or kind of the whole, the entire object. Okay. And then click somewhere inside of it. You see, we are seeing a bigger portion, the entire object. It's not as still inside the display area, but we are able to see a big portion of it. And then you just need to move your cursor over uh, the boundary, just inside the boundary and click somewhere inside. And that's it. You see, so wherever, whenever you see that error, make sure that you are seeing the entire object in your screen. Okay. And in, uh, the other important uh, point about using hatch command is that the boundary should be closed, completely closed. Okay. So we should not see any gap at these end points. Okay. You should make sure that your boundary is completely closed. Let's see what happens when we have a gap over here. So it could be even a small, a very, very small gap. Okay. But let's see, I'm going to hit edge enter and I want to draw a hatch, right? But when I move my cursor, that kind of pre preview mode doesn't happen. You see, it is not filling the uh, boundary. And if I click, it shows me this error. So there might be gaps between the boundary objects. And this one is the case this time, right? And you see some uh, red circles over here. These are kind of showing me where the gaps might be. Okay. So you need to go ahead and go there and kind of close the boundary. And then try to use, and those circles are not going to stay over there. Okay. As soon as you hit, um, R E use region command that I'm going to talk about later, or, uh, just continue working and use the hash command or whatever command that you want, just continue working and they will kind of go away. Okay. And then hit and that's it. Okay. So two important things are here, right? One is that the boundary should be completely closed and it is very, very important. Whenever you are drawing your floor plan, 
make sure you have no gaps between the lines at these points, at the end points, or any other point. And then make sure that you are able to see a uh, kind of a big portion or the, the entire object within your screen. Okay. And let's now let's um, continue with the hatch command and hatch uh, the walls over here. Okay. So I'm going to hit H enter. I'm going to pick solid and then I can come here and hatch the entire walls just you have the option actually to hatch the entire walls with just one when you are in the command just once. Okay, so you don't need to go out and come in come in again. You just need to pick the points at once. That's it. And now if I want to go ahead and change the pattern or something like that and edit the hatch, I can I just need to pick one select it and then come here and change the hatch and i'm going to for example change the factor to eight so you can see the pattern better right or you can again i'm repeating this but it's important to know or you can just pick this point hit enter get out and go and pick the other boundary next time and this other boundary over here. And these are three different objects, right? So if I go ahead and delete this portion, I still have this one. And if I want to edit them, I need to edit them one by one. Okay, another option that we have over here is angle. So if I change the type of pattern to one of these patterns, you see we have angle lines right and we can specify the angle from here so if you want them to be in a specific angle you can type in, in uh, over here or you can do it just randomly using this okay and i would say do not change it unless the book wants you to do that okay so this is what i wanted to cover for chapter 14 have a good day and see you next time